Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and I'm doing an exam question um, on critical path analysis and it's on the first type of question that tends to come up, drawing an activity network. So here's the typical question. They would give you a precedence table and they would ask you to draw an activity network and explain the use of the dummies uh, that you have used. Okay, so I'm going to extend the page and we're going to perform this. So firstly, we all start off at our source node, which we label zero. Now we look up here and A, B and C depend on nothing. So A, B and C can come out of this one. So I'm going to just, without too much consideration, put A there, B there, and lastly C there. So we've done uh, this here. Now D, E and D and E depend on A having been finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the event that A is finished and we said that D and E depend on it. So I'm going to have D and E coming out like that. Okay, in fact, I might even raise this up a little bit so it's a bit closer so we might be able to see a bit better. Okay, now um, F and G depend on B having finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an event for B having finished, number two, and we're going to have um, F and G coming out. So I'm going to have F like that, and I'm going to have G like follows. Now, H depends on C and D finishing. So H depends on C and D finishing, and C and D are extremely far away from, me, from each other at the moment. So it would have been better to draw my project with C and D beside each other. So at this point, I'm going to do a redraw at this point. Now, just at this point, maybe I should have started off by thinking where the dummies might be. Certainly, you think to yourself, a dummy is going to be here because K and L depend on G, but K depends on J as well. So there's going to be a dummy there. And it looks like potentially, um, we'll see where the other dummy will turn up, but that's certainly where one of the dummies are going to be. Anyway, let's redraw this picture. We're trying to get D and C close to each other. So let's have another go. So put zero here for our source node. And what I'm going to do is rather, I can have A up here absolutely no problem like that. And I can still finish that off with one there. But this time I'm going to have E going up and I'm going to have D coming down like that. And instead of having B in the middle, I'm going to have C in the middle. So I'm going to have C in the middle here, like this. And I'm going to have B going down like this. So B is going to be going down there. And I've closed off B already, that's number two. And I have it with F and G coming out like that. F and G. Now we got to the point up here where we said H depends on C and D. So C and D must finish off. So I'm going to draw both of these going into uh, a node which I'm going to call node 3, and D and C, C and D have finished off, and H comes out. So I'm going to have H coming out like this. Right, let's go back up and see what, so we've done that. Now E depends on I having, uh, sorry, sorry, I depends on E having finished. So what I can draw is I can finish off that one there, and I could have I coming out, which I might have coming down, because maybe it's going to come back down here. So I've got up myself up to here. J depends on F and H. Now F and H, they're close enough together, so that's fine. So F and H can finish off here, which would be number five. And J depends on that, which is absolutely fine. So J depends on F and H. Now here's where a dummy's gonna kick in. K depends on G and J. So, and uh, L depends on G. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close off G like that, and that's going to be number six. And I'm going to have L coming out like that. But um, K depends on G and J. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a dummy coming down like this. Sorry. Actually, what I might do, well, I might extend this G. Let me just go back here and extend this G so it's a bit longer, like that. And I'm going to close off G here, so it's a six, like that. Now, 
well, you want k to depend on g and j, whereas l depends on g. So obviously, you can have l coming out here, depending on g, no problem. But you could have a dummy coming in here to close off j, and that would be number 7. And you would say that um, k comes out of that. So this way, k depends on g and j, whereas uh, uh, l depends on just g. So we've got ourselves down to here. And lastly, m depends on l and n depends on l finishing. Okay, so m and n depend on l finishing. So you can close off this with number 8 here. And you're going to have yourself an m uh, uh, and an n, it doesn't matter what order, order they're in, like that. And both of them now are unattached. So i, k, n, and m all have to finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to make them go to a fine, to one at the end here. Now these two both can't start at 8 and finish at the final one. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to close off one of them. It doesn't matter which one. Let's say, I don't know, close off this one here and call it 9. Call that 10. And what we're going to have, n can go straight in there, no problem, but m goes in there via a dummy like that. So that would be our uh, activity network. Now we should redraw the thing with straight lines to make sure it's nice and neat and it looks right. So I'm going to just redraw everything with uh, straight lines, etc. So I'm going to have two things here. Have one more over here. One here, one here, one here, one here. Also going to have myself one maybe here, here, and here. Like that. So I'm going to draw in all the arrows between them. So that's got an arrow, that's got an arrow, that's got an arrow to the very end, that's got an arrow there, that's got an arrow, that's got an arrow, and that's got an arrow. Um, this one's got an arrow to here, this one's got an arrow to here, this one's got an arrow to here, um, the second one's got an arrow over to here, this one's got an arrow here, this one's got an arrow here, got a straight arrow there, maybe we're missing one here, so we should have one more like this, that would have an arrow there, and then we'd have a dummy here, and we'd have a dummy between this one and that one, like that. Okay, so that looks like we've got everything. This is 0, 1, 2, um, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, uh, actually, I think I had one too many in here. Yeah, there wasn't a need for that one there. This should have just gone straight into there, like that, and that would have been eight. That would have been nine, and that would have been ten. Okay, and these would have been that would have been activity A, C, and I'm sure that was B. That would have been F. That would have been G. That would have been E. That would have been D. That would have been I. That would have been H. That would have been J. That would have been K. That would have been N. That would have been M. That would be L, um, and we've got a dummy here and a dummy here. And hence, we're complete there. So there was our final one. So that took a bit of going and explained why each of the two dummies is necessary. So there's a very standard word in for this. So uh, dummy one. So they call this, this one dummy one here. Why is this dummy necessary? So dummy one. So I'll put dummy one, and I'll write dummy one here. Why is it necessary? Well, K depends on, um, so K depends 
on J and G. So K, this one, depends on this one and this one having happened. However, L just depends, but L just depends on G alone. Okay, so that's why dummy one's needed. And dummy two, which is this one, well, there's a very standard wording for this. Um, you just say um, that each each activity must, uh, and in this case, each activity we mean n and m up here must be uniquely represented in terms of its events of its events. And that would make sure you get the marks for explaining the use of the dummy there for three marks. Everything, uh, the, the hardest type of question really that could come up on drawing an activity network. So we're done there.